Starmer. Yeah. Can I join the Prime Minister in his comments about all those affected by these storms? Can I start by welcoming the new member for Mid Bedfordshire? Yeah. The first Labour MP ever to represent those beautiful towns and villages. He defied the odds, history, and of course the fantasy Lib Dem bar charts. Can I also welcome the new member for Tamworth? She will be a powerful representative for her constituents. Is the Prime Minister as relieved as I am that those constituents are not burdened with his defeated candidate who told them, don't worry Mr Speaker, I'm going to sanitise this, to F off if they're struggling with the cost of living? Well, Mr Speaker, I'm proud of what this government is doing to support the most vulnerable over the past year. But, uh, Mr Speaker, can I, can I in fact join him in welcoming the new members to their places? After all, I suspect the new member for Mid-Beds may actually support me a little bit more than the last one. <laughs> although, although, although I did, I did notice, I did notice that the new member said that they will be opposing new housing in their local area, while the, new, while the new member for Tamworth claimed that they will protect green spaces. I would urge them to have a word with their leader, because that's not exactly his position, Mr Speaker, although with his track record of U-turns, who knows what his housing policy will be next week. Yeah, so, much. Well, so, so much for being the change candidate. He can't even distance himself from those appalling comments. Yeah, yeah. But, but I do have to ask him, I do have to ask him, where on earth does the Prime Minister think his candidate got the idea in the first place that throwing expletives at struggling families was his government's official position? Yeah. Prime Minister! Well, Mr. Mr Speaker, let's just look at the record of what this government is doing to help those people. Paying for around half of a typical family's energy bill over the last year, support worth over £1,500. For the most vulnerable in our society, receiving £900 in direct cost of living support, record increases in the national living wage, record increases in welfare, and this winter, Mr. Speaker, pensioners to receive an extra two or three hundred pounds alongside their winter fuel payment to help them through what we know is a tough time. All of that, Mr. Speaker, significant support funded by this government. All of that would be put at risk by Re- Labour's reckless plans to borrow twenty-eight billion pounds a year. Come on. He keeps boasting about how great things are. The voters keep telling him he's got it wrong. But I can see why the Tamworth candidate thought he was just following government lines. Annalisa and her two children lived in their home for eight years. In May, they were kicked out with a no-fault eviction notice. Despite his government's pledge to scrap no-fault evictions, this week the Prime Minister crumbled to the landlords on his own back benches and killed the policy. What message, other than the message delivered by his candidate in Tamworth, could Annalisa possibly take from that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, Mr. Mr Speaker, we've taken significant action to help renters like Annalise and others. We've capped holding deposits at one week. We protected tenants from rip-off tenancy fees, delivered almost half a million affordable homes for rent, and halved the number of percentage of substandard homes in the private rented sector, and strengthened local authority enforcement powers, because this government is delivering for renters. But we are also, Mr Speaker, trying to ensure the new generation can buy their own home. So perhaps he can explain to Annalisa and thousands and millions of others why, when we brought forward plans to unlock 100,000 new homes, he stood in the way of that. Yeah. Well, um, just to say, it's Prime Minister's questions, not opposition questions. Here's Dharma. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Prime Minister. It is Prime Minister's questions. I don't need you nodding against my decision. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
Well, I'm sure Annalisa and her children, who have now been evicted, will take great comfort from that non-answer. Yeah. Emma and her teenage son saw their mortgage go up by more than a quarter. Well, they may think this is funny. This is real life. Yeah. After 16 years of dutifully paying their mortgage, for the first time she's having to choose between new shoes for her son and putting the heating on. All because his party crashed the economy, pushing mortgage rates to their highest levels in decades. He, he says ignore all that, ignore the fact that the guilty men and women responsible are standing again as his candidates and still setting his policy. Can he not see why Emma might think that his party is telling them exactly where to go? Mr Speaker, he, he keeps talking about the mini-budget. I won't ask him a question, Mr Speaker. Well, I will just point out, he did actually support 95% of the things in that mini-budget, which I didn't, Mr Speaker. But again, he's had, a whole, he's had a whole summer to get on top of the details. He's still ignoring the fact that rising interest rates are a global challenge. They are at their highest level in America and Europe for more than 20 or 30 years. Mortgage rates have doubled in America, trebled in Europe. Now, what we do want to do to help mortgage holders is ensure that they can use the mortgage charter that we've agreed with the banks. And thanks to the steps that we've taken, someone with a £200,000 property with about £100,000 left on their mortgage could save over £350 a month and lock in a new deal six months before theirs ended and repossessions will be prohibited for 12 months from the first missed payment. He might have missed that that policy is twice as generous as Labour's. Absolutely tone deaf in every calf, pub and supermarket in Britain, Britain having the same conversation. We can't afford that. Put it back on the shelf. It's too expensive. He is completely oblivious, just patting himself on the back. Emily and Jamie have worked hard and saving for years to buy their own home. They were nearly there last year, but he scrapped house building targets because his backbenchers pushed him around. House building has fallen off a cliff, shattering the simple dream of home ownership for people like Emily and Jamie. Can the Prime Minister now see that actually his candidate in Tamworth was just loyally following the party line? Mr Speaker, I think these, these prepared lines really aren't working for him anymore. He, he, literally, he literally asked a question. He literally asked me a question about the support that we're providing for mortgage holders. I gave him the answer to that question, and then he read from his script to say that we hadn't answered the question. We're providing significant help for all these people. He's moved on to housing targets, but here's the record. Two and a half million additional homes. Housing starts double what they inher- we inherited from the Labour Party. Housing supply up 10%, on track to deliver a million new homes, and a record number of first-time buyers, Mr Speaker. But again, he brings up his candidates in Tamworth and Mid-Beds. As we open this session, he's now saying he wants to build he wants to build homes well both of those candidates want to say that they want to block new homes in their constituency Uh, (laughs) thank you mr speaker mr speaker across our country the british people are rolling up their sleeves and getting on with it doing their best in the face of a punishing cost of living crisis and a government that has abandoned them, abandoned renters at risk of being kicked out, abandoned mortgage payers struggling to make ends meet, abandoned those who dream of owning their own house. The truth is, his candidate in Tamworth summed up perfectly just how his and his Tories are treating the British public. So will he just call a general election and give the British public the chance to respond, as they did in Selby, Midbeds and Tamworth? They've heard the government telling them to F off, and they want the chance to return the compliment. (laughs) Mr Mr Speaker. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, look, as we saw with his recent decisions on actually building new houses, politicians like him always take the easy way out, Mr Speaker. Whereas we're, 
We are getting on making the right long-term decisions to change this country for the better on net zero, on HS2, on a smoke-free generation, on education and energy security. Contrast that to his leadership. Too cautious to say anything and hope that nobody notices, Mr Speaker. Let me tell him, come that general election, the British people will. Yeah.